Well, it's still spring, but we are dealing with a nasty bug hatch today. Bugs are hatching all year long. It's not just a midsummer thing, not just a out in the mud flats thing. We have kind of a unique situation where we've got all these fish flies or midges or whatever they're called hatching early enough in the season while fish are still out on this shoreline stuff. And yesterday was the first day of the big hatch and the fish were just stupid. You could throw anything anywhere. They'd come from 10 feet away and eat any plastic. You were better off throwing plastics. So we come back out here today just ready to super glue the hands and fingers shut again. <laughs> just get turned down, turned down, turned down. And it's like, okay, well now we're a full 24 hours or two days into a bug hatch and things have changed. Oh, this is a good one. And I didn't want to change because I'm stubborn, but I finally had to after getting shut down on a bunch of different baits. We're busting out the meat. Not proud of it, but little jigs and half crawlers, slip bobbers and leeches. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, especially when the bugs are hatching in, in and around everything. The first fish just came on a little 316 ounce VMC Ned Rig jig with a half crawler. I can't explain it, but that conical keeper keeps that crawler pinned up there versus tearing and the the thing will tear in half before the head slides down. It just works perfect, but this is not glamorous, but this is something that I do keep tied on all year round, and usually, well, I haven't had to bust it out yet this year. Jeez. Usually, I don't throw it until midsummer for uh, suspended fish out deep when they're not touching anything else. i just thread that on there straight, push the head up, Pinch off about the back third or so, sometimes a little smaller. Always donate the back half to the fish gods. And it's just a super simple fishy little thing when things are crazy tough that I know it can get me bites. Man, I casted, I mean, 12 times at that school of fish without getting bit and first cast into them with the jig and a half a crawler, bonk. So I gotta put the pride away put the plastics down for today, fight these bugs off, and see if we can scrape up some fish, put some fish in the boat. Got one looking at it, just a solo. After going all that time without a bite, now we just went back to back cast. And like I said, the weird thing is we're dealing with a bug hatch, but it's we're fishing shoreline breaks still. The fish are post spawn. Whoa! Ooh. That was too big to boat flip. The fish are post spawn. <laughs> and up here on this shallow structure, and we're fishing anywhere from seven to twelve-ish feet today. And what I'm doing is I'm basically fishing this in the middle of the column to the lower half, but just slowly bopping it and kind of letting it hang in the middle of the column. And it just looks like a little bug or a little larva, just a little natural thing. And you'll see them come up for it, you'll see them chase it down, but really if I'm fishing any shallower than I am now or if the wind lets up anymore, I should drop down to an eighth ounce just to hang that thing in the column a little better. But it started out uh, ripping this morning, so I got a 316 ounce on. and. We might have to make a move here, but also don't flip 23 inch walleyes. Don't boat flip them with spinning gear and eight pound test. Crawler me. Might as well just bring that up here now. Man, I wasn't even gonna have bait with today. I mean, the whole should have been here yesterday thing, right? <laughs> Yesterday you were at a disadvantage using live bait because you could not cast back out fast enough and the dude throwing plastics would catch three to one or even more. Just firing back at the school. And I threw those in just just for the heck of it, just in case, and and now that's back to back cast. I mean, we'll count that one because we could have netted it. That's kind of my rule of thumb. If you 
could have netted it or could have touched it with your hand, I'd count it. <laughs> just like that, like clockwork. You see what we're dealing with? Thank goodness there's still just enough wind to keep them off of our faces for now. Oh, that's three casts in a row, dude. Should have done this an hour and a half ago. <laughs> Went an hour and a half of catching one and getting turned down and turned down. And now they're just racing up for it. But throwing this on, I've mentioned it a million times, but like the most universal finesse wall I set up is a 7.3 medium light fast. I don't know if I hear, this one's a little smaller. And with some 10 pound stuff that's sprayed and about an eight foot, eight pound fluorocarbon meter. And he's hooked right in the top shelf where grandma hides the peanut butter. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, right? That's fun though, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I had to milk that cast out a little bit, but we did legitimately just go four for four. I just cannot believe it's like a whole different day now. Man, bug hatches are a big curveball. When you're there, when they first start, the fishing can be just insane, but it progressively gets tougher and tougher and tougher as you get into it. In midsummer, I mean, I'd be pulling spinners out in the mud and soft bottom, covering water, slow death style. Whoa, that popped out. It's a good thing I didn't boat flip it. This time of year, with these fish shallower, I'm just pitching, but you can absolutely still run a spinner rig along these 7 to 14 foot edges off of the first main shoreline break and uh, just cover water with a little spinner or even just a slow death style hook. And uh, man, they're look, coming up and demolishing it. So it's just a numbers game too. With any, any sort of bug hatch fishing, um, getting your bait in front of enough fish, especially as the season goes on. Like as we start pushing out into the mud flats and stuff, then, you know, you get the big mayfly hatches instead of the fish fly and you can see them popping off bottom on down imaging. And then it's like, you gotta work a one mile section and put your bait in front of, you know, 37 walleyes and eventually you'll get one to, oh, I just messed up the five for five. I bet he got my crawler. Yeah, you put your bait in front of enough fish and eventually you're gonna get a hungry one or a dumb one to bite. But anytime I can do hand to hand combat and cast at them, I would much rather do that. No more five for five. The rare shot of somebody live scoping, but you can see their face. All right, ready? You comfy down there? Just like that, <laughs> dude. Obviously, this jig and a half crawler has saved the day thus far. It is almost on command. They're annihilating it, but it's not the only way to catch walleyes during a tough bug hatch. So. We're gonna get this bad boy in here and then uh, we'll show you another another way to present some live bait right in front of their snoots. What do we got here? Oh. <laughs> there we go. All right, say goodbye to the jigging, jigging and crawler for now. Thanks, buddy. It's cheating, man. It's cheating. A little cheat code. I don't want to put it down. But also, the fisherman in me loves playing around with what will they bite, what won't they bite. 
and uh, we already figured out five or six different baits and presentations they will not touch today. They'll follow it, they'll look at it, or they'll just give it the side eye and ignore it. So now I wanna play around with different stuff and see what they will eat besides this. got that little kid feeling because my bobber was shooting down and that's right you could not talk about tough bites and putting live bait in front of fish's face walleye's face without talking about slip bobbers and busting them out when things get tough and boy that was instant. oh beautiful gold I've just got a tiny little 16th ounce VMC hardball jig on here. I mean it is tiny. Most of the time I throw an eighth, but just with how fussy the fish had been today. Downsized, a nice long two foot at least lead to a swivel, bead, a little slip weight, weighted bobber. I got a 10 pound braided mainline. You can obviously use any rod for a bobber, but Something that's really fun is using a rod that's designed for it. This is a precision shooter, a 2B. Big oversized guide so the slip knot flies through there. Longer rod with a moderate action for doing the reeling hook sets. And man, it just literally makes me feel like a little kid again. Setting that bobber up above where you're seeing fish, if you're graphing fish 10 feet down over 12 feet of water, I set that bobber two feet higher than I'm seeing the fish, making them come up for it. And it just feels like most of the time, if you can get that fish to start coming up, it's like ice fishing. Your odds of getting them to bite are that much better. That was fast, man. Turns out live bait works for walleyes. <laughs> what have I been doing all these years? <laughs> Got some jumbo leeches that have been sitting in my fridge for two weeks, but are somehow still alive. Yeah, just, with these tiny little jigs, I'm just hooking it one time, just below the sucker, just for a little tougher spot. Doesn't get any easier. Other than you just have to be fishing around fish, because obviously you're not covering water with a bobber. So you're doing your side imaging, you're doing your graphing first. For me, this is when you know there's fish there and they're not biting. That's when I fish a bobber. I don't fish a bobber to find fish or, if, you know, I don't know what's going on, but midsummer, we do a ton of this when you're idling around on the edges of the deep mud flats, when you got mayfly hatches and stuff. And then you can just use 2D sonar or down imaging, idle around till you graph a pot of four or five fish, put the boat in neutral, throw the bobber out the back, boom. So then you can cover water. And that's a technique that just is killer where you don't need live sonar or anything like that. Once those fish are out a little deeper, Earlier in the season, we've got some of these bug hatches like the fish flies and stuff, and we're still fishing those first shoreline breaks. That's when it gets a little tougher with the 2D and down imaging, because sometimes we're in seven, eight, nine feet, sometimes 10 to 14, but you're just shallow enough that by the time you drive over those heads, they're pushing them out to the side. So that's where I side image until I'm graphing pods and then start deploying this if we are desperate. And we were today, I'll be honest. I was pouting like a little baby. Nick was uh, ready to have me drop him off, I think, at the access. <laughs> it was totally one of them should have been here yesterday things. And the one thing you should never say to anyone you're fishing with or a guide should never tell anyone, right? Or a buddy, like, man, yesterday, yesterday. And I was about now. to say, you, well, why didn't you invite me yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's turn today into should have been here. Should have been here today. Let's do that. <laughs> I forgot how relaxing it is to fish when it's not artificials. <laughs> Dude, it is so chill. A bobber? Just waiting for that thing to go down? I can't believe it hasn't gone down yet. There it goes. She's sinking. Quick little tip for you, setting the hook with a bobber. Reeling hook sets. Uh oh, I'm tangled in your line. <laughs> I got it. A reeling hook set. You gotta think about the angle that your line is at. And if you do a normal hook set where you just swing, you're literally just bouncing that bobber like that. So you gotta pick up all that slack before you hit them. It's not as crucial in shallow water, just because there isn't as much of an angle. 
but especially once you get out to some of that deeper stuff and your your line is at a 90 degree angle almost and if you set the hook you're literally just moving the weight not really moving the hook much so do a reeling hook set and that's where I like this kind of moderate action rod so it really loads up and once you get that bend in the rod and it's loaded then I'll lean into them a little more but I used to miss a lot of fish throwing a slip bobber when I started for walleyes because it's just you grew up as a kid fishing shallow and three feet for bluegills and stuff didn't matter right and all of a sudden you're in 15 feet or in 29 feet and everything is just different with that big angle where you got to pick up the slack Reeling hook set. Letting them eat it so long. The bobber's down. Bob, my bobber's down? <laughs> Where's it at? Reel and find out. Ooh. This one's that next caliber up. So yeah, I know we talk a lot about uh, artificials and snap jigging and all that fun stuff, jigging wraps, but like, when it comes down to it, if it's a tough bite, you need to get bit, don't be ashamed to bust out the live bait and put a hurting on some Waldos, man. <laughs> Literally can save the day. What do we got here? Is that a tag? Did I see a tag or is it just some yuck? That's a nicer fish. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm gonna lose this thing yet. Are you serious? He wasn't done fighting. I thought he had a tag, but it's just a dingleberry. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. It's a feeling that just never gets old. Don't be ashamed. Put on the crawler, put on the leech, stoop to their level, and get to catching, man. God, this is fun. Woohoo, baby! <laughs> Thank you.